All right, so we went down to check out the hollow plot system, and it's not the first time I heard it. And when I was in Italy visiting PowerSoft, I got to see the amplifiers and uh, control for it. And it's a really powerful and innovative system that uses a multitude of drivers to create various things like uh, wave front synthesis and beam steering and uh, coverage control that exceeds stuff that can be done by other systems. As you can see here, there's a lot of speakers in there. Uh, the ones that have the holes in them, those are ported. They have 80 speakers in them. And the ones without the ports, subwoofer in there or woofer in there, have 96 speakers. And these things are arrayable in vertical, horizontal, or vertical and horizontal arrays. And to provide a wide variety of uh, coverage and applications. It's important to note that when you're beam steering or wavefront synthesis, you're simulating, you're forcing control over where the sound is going. And that's different. Like uh, the real sounding speaker doesn't have a sweet spot. It radiates out sound from the speaker itself that in the videos I've done on that. And it doesn't have a sweet spot. Whereas um, something like this will have a sweet spot or a sweet area that it's propagating towards. Now they can control each driver separately is individually attached to its own power amp and processor that controls its time delay, volume and phase and EQ. And by doing that, it can really, really um, do some fun stuff. And uh, now the demo I did do with my cell phone, so the audio is not great. Uh, these things are not inexpensive. They're approximately thirty-six and thirty-eight thousand dollars a piece, depending if you get the woofer in there or it's all of the low and high components. And they are not light. Either I believe they're 200 and something pounds. And the exploded view, you can see that um, there's 18, I believe they're five inch woofers and 90, 18, uh, 72 of these little tweeters, that one in a third inch tweeters, I believe, and forming an array. The closer together these are, and the more of these speakers, the more of the hollow pot speakers you have, the more control you have over uh, its capabilities. The more you can beam steer or the farther you can shoot or the more realistic of a wavefront synthesis that you can create down to a lower frequency. And this can do multiple beam steers within a single enclosure or within an array of enclosures. You can have this cover a certain instrument covers from, you know, three feet to 12 feet. And another instrument covers from six feet to 20 feet and so on. And they can change this horizontally and vertically. Now, wavefront synthesis is something where you control the time, phase, and volume of the various sources such that a 3D image exists in space. So it, it's not just aiming a beam like a flashlight, like focusing a flashlight or a, a, you know, a Fresnel lens to cover a certain area and another lens maybe overlaps and covers another area. It more parallels a hologram where the sound is projected to a certain area. And when you're in front of it or off to either side, it sounds like the sound is coming from that point in space. Now, those 3D holograms don't really hold up as you go past them. You know, they kind of uh, fall apart a bit, but is if you're off to either side or you're in front, it can, it sounds like the sound is coming from a um, certain point in space. And we can kind of hear that in some of these demos coming up. And um, it's riggable and stackable, and there's quite a few of them in, uh, you know, the MSG sphere, like hundreds of thousands of speakers, uh, not hundreds of thousands of cabinets, but of the individual speakers and amps. All right, so let's go ahead and take a listen. So in this demo is wavefront synthesis, where there's eight different little dots in the ground, and each dot you can hear a different sound being propagated. And um, 
it's pretty focused. Now, I'm holding the phone down low, so it's not working as well as it is at head level, where I think it was more tuned to. Um, but you should be able to hear the various um, sounds as I walk through them. next demo is diffuse versus direct and the dispersion of the signal is being changed from diffuse which means it's kind of covering a very wide area to direct where it's being beam steered to cover a very narrow area we can hear the difference in clarity and lack of um, room reverberation and such as it goes to the direct signal you can steer yourself any direction you choose. You're on your own, and you know what you know. And you are the guy who will decide where to go. You'll get mixed up, of course, as you already know. You'll get mixed up with many strange birds as you go. So be sure when you step, step with care and great tact, and remember that life's a great balancing act. And will you succeed? Yes, you will indeed. 98 and three quarter percent guaranteed. Kid, you'll move mountains. In this demo, we're looking at controlled horizontal coverage where the beam is being steered to cover in the area in front and reduce the coverage off to the sides such that we don't hear as much um, sound outside of the coverage area. Now this doesn't work as well as it would in a less reverberant environment, but you should be able to hear the clarity increase as we get into the coverage zones. That happened on to me. My name is nothing extra. In this demo, we're going to hear overlapping beam steering, where a different mix is being projected to different areas. So as we walk across the horizontal domain, uh, we'll hear the vocals louder, or the guitar louder, and we'll hear the mix change. Well, we'll also hear in the background uh, some basic components of the mix that stay the same. going to listen to separated beam steering where one signal is sent to a certain area and a different signal is sent to another area and they are not overlapping as they were in the last video. They might meet weird creatures in undiscovered parts. <laughs> The whole existence is shaped by the great ocean currents, which sweep them endlessly around the biggest living space in the solar system. The human mind has always had a fascination. The 
For this demo, they have set up two wooden plates at a distance behind the listening area, and they have some of the sound from the speakers focused onto those plates such that the plates reflect the sound back into the listening area, creating like rear speakers created by reflection. And you can see that up in the top corner there, and there's another plate there. We don't really see them yet, but there's some wooden square plates. There's one of them on that um, truss section. And it shoots the sound, reflects off the plate. One of the challenges with this is the time delay it takes for it to travel to the plate and then reflect back from the plate to the listener is double the amount of what it would be if it was shooting straight from a radiating surface where the plate is located. Um, if you could put speakers back there, you could do that. But this gives you ability to create a surround sound due to reflections and um, virtual sources located elsewhere in the room. Can't seem to get you out of the For this final demo, this is a straight music used as like a PA system, a conventional system, and we're listening to it at a higher level and full range to give an idea of what it could do um, being used as a conventional sound system. And um, this will be the last demo of the video here. Well, I hope you found this interesting. Uh, this is a very advanced technology, and uh, AVB is how the signal is sent. I'm told the latency is around five milliseconds to process the signal. Each speaker processes its own signal because sending all those processed signals would be overly cumbersome. And the capabilities are quite interesting. If there is a budget and a use to achieve something that is unique yeah it's pretty cool stuff and i don't see this as a replacement but it is something that um, adds a unique dynamic a deployable system that has capabilities beyond what normal systems do and like with anything in audio when you electronically guide and steer things, you gain a lot of control, but you also make concessions. Having something mechanically perfectly positioned as the people that push for point sources and uh, line arrays that are not electronically steered uh, well understand is an optimum way of doing it. And when you electronically force it, you need a very high resolution, lots of drivers, and uh, there's an efficiency cost and the fidelity is diminished unless there is an infinite resolution, which would occur if it was mechanically fluid. If you have, let's say, a bunch of drivers all attached to the same horn, very perfectly time and phase aligned, coming out of that horn is going to give you a different sound than if you have a bunch of drivers flat mounted each time and phase aligned to simulate coming out of that horn. Uh, we see that in subwoofer setups, and uh, one good way to look at that is um, check out the difference between a delayed arc subwoofer array and an actual arc subwoofer array, and the differences in the way that they cover and sound. Mm -hmm.